We'll hear from Brighton and from Andy Naylor, who writes for The Athletic just a little later on. He's in the press conference. He's still at the moment. He'll be with us at some stage on the Sunday Night Club here on Talk TV. But uh, a lot of work to do after their 3-0 winning uh, at uh, Arsenal today. But Rich Butler is uh, most definitely with us, Arsenal podcaster, of course. And uh, an apology tonight from Mikel Arteta speaking... uh, as he was earlier, to Sky. A week ago, I was standing here feeling proud, and today we have to apologise for the performance in the second half. It wasn't acceptable. He goes on to talk about how mathematically it's still possible, but we can't even think about that with the way we played today. Got to take the chances, got to be more aggressive. But we mustn't forget either that Brighton are of decent side, and as soon as Arsenal lost their grip, they showed why they are and why they've troubled so many people this season. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm so disappointed with how we played today. It was a really, really poor performance in a game that we had to win. I wouldn't have been so surprised, maybe, if we'd played like this last week against Newcastle, because it would have been more expected. But at home to Brighton, I know you're right, Brighton played really well today. and I was really impressed with how they played. But if we'd been anywhere near our best, uh, it might have been a totally different story. We played into Brighton's hands a lot, especially in the second half. And I just think it just shows maybe the lack of experience that we've got on the pitch, in the team, in certain key areas, um, and also maybe on the bench as well. Uh, ex- inexperience of dealing with these types of moments in a season where mm. obviously it was it was difficult, wasn't it, with Man City playing first and winning suddenly it put a different atmosphere into our game because with games running out, it was looking even if we'd won winning a title would still have been a big ask in a situation that we're in. And I just think that maybe that was partly to do with Arsenal's performance today because it wasn't what we've seen from Arsenal, was it, in the last two or three no. games where we've, we've, we've been a lot better. And today, it's just really, really poor at a totally wrong time. Andy um, will tell us the other Brighton side of things a little later on. But, Rich, I think you're absolutely right with what you say there. I think, you know, I mean, we were sitting here at the talk TV and in the towers and and saying you know at the start of the game if if Arsenal are to do anything this season this is the game which won't be easy that they've got to win but then I'll look at it another way and think this has been a terrific season right from the start of pre-season and a young team with to be fair to Mikel Arteta reasonably young as a number one as he is and the way that he's done it even though he knows the Arsenal way is that you, you, I know you don't want to hear this at the moment, but it, it puts as long as you can keep players and add to this an Arsenal side that I see no reason why can't stay around at the top for the next few years. Well, of course, that's what we hope. Uh, I mean, Arsenal, historically, we've been a team that's always been, you know, challenging for titles, winning big trophies. So, obviously, we want to see we've had a few years where we've been off the pace and it's nice mm-hmm. to be back up there challenging again but we you're right we can't just do it once it can't be a one-off season we have to build on this we have got a young team and we need to add to it we need a bit more experience in certain positions i think for next season and we need a bit more depth as well players on the bench that we can rely on to come on and uh, and win us games like this when it's going against us because today we we made some changes but they didn't impact the game enough to make a difference and that's maybe what where Manchester City have got that over us you know they've got a much bigger squad experience and we need to find a way to close that gap it's a long gap you can see Man City have beaten us twice this season seven to two on aggregate and you can see the gap between us and Man City individually but over 38 games we've closed the gap a lot this season but yeah. there's still work to do isn't there if we're going to take that next step other teams are going to be improving as well we've got to build on this season or it's going to mean nothing chances not just half chance you've taken some really good half chances this season you've scored some goals that perhaps i'm sure when you've watched the game you thought I can't believe we've actually put that one in the back of the net um and at times there have been other uh, other times when it hasn't happened but you know all of this is 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 a learning it, it, it's Arsenal back there because although you as a fan have seen uh, many, well, at least a couple of generations, I'm sure, of, of great Arsenal players, this is the new generation. So they haven't they haven't completely understood this all the time. They, as you said right at the top of uh, this interview, you know, we're on the under pressure immediately because Manchester City have already gone and won today. That, that in itself completely changed the complexity. There is no room for error, and that's when error happens, when people don't quite go about their normal job. 
Exactly, yeah. And it is a learning curve, you're right. And hopefully the experience of this season will stand exactly. us in good stead going forward for future, hopefully future title challenges that's coming over the next couple of seasons, which is what we're, we're hoping for. But when you look back a year ago, we were in a position to get the place in the top four the pressure was on at the end and we crumbled we were in a good position to take the league title all the way to the end possibly win it a few weeks ago the pressure's been on and we've crumbled yes it's more pressure now it's a different pressure but have we really learned that much from what happened at the end of last season on the evidence of today and other games in the last few weeks as well the Southampton game um, you know the West Ham game the game at City have we really learned a lot of that I'm not really sure if we have too much we've improved because our players have got better um, and we've got some good new additions have come in but I don't know. I'm still not sure that the, if the mentality is, is quite there yet to really go on to that next level. I hope that, as you said, it's a learning curve and they will learn a lot from this season. But we'll see. We're not really going to know, are we, until next season no. when we're back in a position like this again. But if, I th- we're, if we change it for the title again, <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, but I think, you know, a couple of seasons ago where you were and, then, uh, and you improved on that this season... Uh, I don't like to talk too much about all of this, but these two seasons off the back of what was two years sort of weirdly in the wilderness with COVID and everything else, and with a lot of these players have done nothing but play football. I see they're all announcing big uh, trips away in the summer and everything. You know, now and again, it's it's young. I mean, we we talk, I used to say about youngsters, well, you know, how on earth can they get tired and, and, and that sort of thing. You can, at the intensity, the pace and everything now that there is, if you've never been in this position before. And um, we're going to be talking about the the golf uh, to come next week in the States. It's not until you get to that final nine holes in a major championship that you learn whether you know enough and you've learned enough when you've lost to get there now and go and win it. And I think that's the same with this Arsenal side and with their manager. Yeah, I mean, potentially, I think that's definitely what's happened this season as well. And yeah, you, you don't, you learn more, don't you, from yeah, failure than you do yourself from and those you can off. trust in your dressing room and and how those yeah. that you can tell the right thing to others. You can't give them a bit of a telling off because you know it'll crumble and and what have you. I mean, it's a fine line these days. It is, yeah, and I think it's more, you know, you're talking about tiredness, and I think it's more of a of a mental yeah. tiredness with this team as opposed to a physical yeah. tiredness. You know, we've we've been in a position that most of these players have never been in before, and the manager as well has never been in it. As a manager, yes, he's done it with Man City as a coach previously, but not as a manager. And I feel as though, yeah, I think maybe the, the whole mental strain of being in this position over the last two two months or so has, has started to take its toll, and you've seen that in some of the performances recently, particularly today. I mean, that was totally out of the blue how badly we played today actually and you've mm-hmm. got to give Brighton credit they they came and did a job and they were very good side with they some are. very good players but we were that was a really unexpectedly bad performance at this point in the season and I don't know where that came from was it the pressure was it the mental tiredness was it the fact Man City won I think all of those things together as well plus the fact that maybe on the day it wasn't quite our day was it nothing no. quite came for us nothing quite fell for us in the in the penalty area and we made a couple of terrible defensive mistakes and got punished yeah exactly that and another day one of those i mean you, you know you, when your defender slipped whether the boot came off or what happened and i mean it was all a bit of a mess wasn't it for that that particular uh, goal and uh, that's the sort of thing that that can happen at any stage i think another thing that uh, I'm always fascinated with, and and you get the spin from commentators and pundits and, you know, the Gary Nevilles of this world who, through his own experience, will say, oh, you know, this is going to be either Man United or Manchester City's title this year. Arsenal has still got to wait in Newcastle five years' time and all this sort of stuff. I don't think that... If if you get some of the players beginning to listen to all of that sort of things, I mean, Gary Nelwell is very experienced as a title winner and everything. He can't completely diss everything he says. But, you know, all of that is just part of this extra pressure. You've just got to take on board and not let it wind you up as a player. Yeah, exactly, you have. And maybe part of the fact is because it is a new experience as a manager for Mikel Arteta as well, he's got to deal with that and then get that over to the players, hasn't he? And it's mm. it's difficult to win a league title for any team, oh, no, no matter how many times... Hardly any of them have before. ever done it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only two players that we've got that have won the league in England have been the two that we bought from Man City last year. <laughs> and one of them was injured today anyway. Yeah. And, I mean, it is it is difficult to win a league. It's difficult for Man City to win a league. It's difficult for anybody to win a league title. And it takes not only... It's not only about your ability as a player or as a team or as a coach. It's about that, actually having that 
uh, ability to when the pressure is on to be able to put that aside look at Man City they've had to win 10-11 games in a row mm. and that's what they've done mm. because they have that experience to know how to do that Man United what you mentioned Gary Neville when he played that's mm. what they used to do every year didn't they yeah. and it's not going to come from nowhere and Arsenal need to learn from this 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 season and we need to say right okay next season when we're in this position which hopefully we will be we can build off the experience and, that we've got from this and a disappointment and channel that in the right direction and be able to get it over. But is it? Is, uh, can we do it in a year's time? Is that still too too soon? Well, do we need longer? I, I don't know. Um, uh, you, perhaps you can. I think one of the other things that when we're in this position and then we look at the clubs, whatever the divisions they're in, I certainly think the intensity at the top of the Premier League where you have to be on it or any side will be anybody else, is that it now depends what the board what those who uh, are going to be looking at um, player recruitment are doing now, what you really need to add without completely destabilising what you've already got. These are all things that are essential and needed, and I think that's as an important part of where Arsenal are now, that, that, that those people have to be in tune with the manager and what he wants and what the players themselves need alongside them do they need another goal scorer? Do we need somebody else who's got a bit more pace at the back? Were we exposed at times today because one or two of our players have played too many games this season? All of these things have got to be taken into account as the way they were by the great Sir Alex Ferguson, whatever you thought of him, and the likes of Pep Guardiola and others. That is what they do. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a big summer for Arsenal now, isn't it? Because yeah, massive. We, as I said before, we have to build on this season. We can't just let this be a one-off season we've got to we're in the champions league next season as well which is more games more big pressure games we need a bigger squad and we're going to have to improve what we've got in the summer there's no doubt about that we need some big recruitments we do need a goal scorer you're right another goal an out and out goal scorer i think we need whether it's to start or to come off the bench um i do think we need more experience in defense we've seen how much we miss william saliba when he's been out young kiwi has come in he's done well he got a little bit exposed today against a very pacey m good movement in attack mm. and there are definitely areas that we need to improve on but yeah it's a big summer because we have to build on this season. We have to. And the only way to do that, really, is in is in the transfer market as well, isn't it? You yeah. know, especially, I say, this season we've had one game a week most of the season because we, you know, we got knocked out of the Europa League early on. We, we got knocked out of all the cups quite early. So next season Look, we've got the Champions League. We hope to put some cup challenges in as well. We need a bigger squad, definitely. London and the Champions League means that if you, if you want to go out and show the ambition to the Arsenal fans, the board... You know, you, you've got all, you've got everything you need. I mean, Mikel Arteta and this side have put you in that position to say, look, we've, we've got this far. Now you've got to be with us all the way for this next possibility of a, a great few seasons for Arsenal. And, and let's not forget that you have done so well this season and the crowd, it feels much more the Arsenal again, the real Arsenal, the tourists are gone. There's more that I, I was on the I, I come down from the East Midlands today and I come down on the on the on the train that goes went past Arsenal today. The Arsenal fans there, I mean, three generations of them all talking, all buzzing. That's what's been missing. And it's all there now. And the board have just got to reply with what you all need, which is two or three quality players who will really help this squad out. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you, you can see the difference this season on and off the pitch at Arsenal. There's been a massive change. Um, and yeah, it is. You're right. I mean, London and the Champions League, if that doesn't attract top players, then what else is going to? So, <laughs> might as well give is, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, the, the board have got to go and do what they, they do. The, the guys looking at the transfers, we've got to get the, the deals done this summer. There can be no more excuses saying, you know, this player hasn't come or that player hasn't come. We've got to get everybody that we need in this summer. And if we do that, then next season could be, you know, we could be sitting here in a year's time um, mm. looking back on a great success that Arsenal have had, you know, winning the, the Premier League or the Champions League or something like that. So, but it is going to be down to what happens in this. So I think the board have got to back Arteta. They've got to back the club now because yeah. we are, it's going to go, it's sort of a crossroads almost, isn't it? We either back the team and move forward or we don't. And then we're going to end up getting overtaken next season by other clubs that we've been ahead of this year. So You only have to look uh, what's happening down the road summer. in North London for that, don't you?
Exactly. You do. Exactly. I mean, you know, a few years ago, Tottenham were saying, you know, that the, the power shift has gone in their favour and that kind of stuff. And it soon changes quickly, doesn't it? You can't yeah. rest on your laurels in football, especially these days. No. You know, you have to sort of make the most of it when things are going well. And at the moment, they, they go, OK, today didn't go well, but overall, it's gone well for us this season. Yeah. And we've got to move. We've, we've got to push on from here. And let's 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 challenge Man City again next next season. And let's challenge everybody else and say that we're here to stay. This isn't a, this wasn't a one off season. This is where we're going to be now. It's going to yeah. be a. A big, a big few years for Arsenal. Rich, great work. Great to have you on the Sunday Night Club on Talk TV.